Hello everyone, this is for my tax class on the topic Tariff and Customs Duties in the Philippines. So basically for Tariff and Customs Duties, we have Import Duties and Export Duties. For Import Duties, there would be Ordinary and Special Duties, which we will discuss later, but as for Export duties, logs, are the only remaining products subject to duty under the Tariff and Customs Code. So, export duty imposed on logs is 20% gross free on board value at the time of shipment. So, going back to import duties, we have first the ordinary import duties which is levied upon by government as a revenue generating measure and a protective measure to support and protect local industries. Now these uh, import duties are imposed generally in ad valorem form and the schedules, corresponding schedules and classifications are provided for under Section 104 of the Tariff and Customs Code of the Philippines as amended. Now we also have duty-free imports, which will be discussed later. But as per our Customs Code, the duty classification can either be under the most favored nation or the ASEAN Trade in Goods Agreement. Agreement. For most favored nations, the rate, duty rates could range from rate, free 0 to 30%. For the, but it could go as high as 65%. On the other hand, on the ASEAN Agreement, uh, member member states agreed to place 99% of all the products in their inclusion list at zero duty. All right. Now the president, upon recommendation of the NEDA, and in the interest of public welfare can increase, reduce, or remove existing protective tariff rates. He can also, he or she can also increase the rate of duty higher than the maximum 100% ad valorem. Also, uh, establish import quota or ban importation of any commodity as necessary. For special duties, we'll skip that for now, for a while. Uh, let's focus more on what uh, what these import duties are. So we have here a frequently asked questions uh, done or published by the Philippine Embassy in Singapore. So what articles are subject to duty? Basically, all articles when importing the Philippines are subject to duty. When does importation begin and deem terminated? It begins when the carrying vessel or aircraft enters Philippine jurisdiction with the intention to unlay therein. Importation terminates upon payment of duties, taxes, and other charges. Who are authorized to make import entry? That would be your importers, licensed custom brokers, or attorneys in fact. When to file entry? You have to file entry within 30 days from date of discharge of the last package from the vessel. Otherwise, or failure to do so would amount to forfeiture of the goods shipped. So again, what articles are subject to duty? We have two kinds of import entry. We have informal and formal. 
when we say informal that would include items with uh, uh, low value less than 2000 personal and household effects which are for personal use formal entry would be articles of commercial nature which has value more than 2,000 pesos. Uh, articles 4, which the collector, upon recommendation, retire permission for the protection of local industry, require formal entry. And then you also have all imported articles are subject to formal and informal entry except imp importation admitted free of duty for official use of embassies and foreign government. Now, we skip first the duty-free and uh, uh, see this um, tax watch being published by the Department of Finance. I would like to focus or to make emphasis that your customs has uh, would focus on special products that are imported in the Philippines and uh, discuss on how these are classified and uh, qualified in terms of import duties so these items are could be electronics ipads suvs distilled spirits tiles and ceramics frozen meat yogurt whey cheese and the like so these are um, for purposes of facilitating classification now so that is for import duties now for the special duties that would be anti-dumping countervailing duties marking duties discriminatory duties safeguard measures these are special duties that uh, according to circumstances would require a different approach or special attention from our tariff commission this is the website of the tariff commission if you look onto services you would see the various special duties that our tariff commission goes into okay so we have here a infographic say for example for anti-dumping measures uh, our tariff commission is mandated to conduct formal investigation and submit a report to dti to for the imposition of definitive anti-dumping duties in cases where there are unfair unfair trade practice of dumping this occurs when goods are exported at prices lower than home market prices. So our tariff commission would look into whether these items are like products or imported items are like products with local industries and there is a big price difference and this is causing, causing injury to our local industries. Who may file it may be filed by uh, domestic industry local producers who are affected by the uh, price difference of these imported imported articles so our um, complainants can file for provisional measures uh, short measures so like um, security by cash deposit or bond equal to the estimated difference in prices and then finally if there is proof of uh, dumping then uh, your our dti can impose definitive anti-dumping duty uh, up to five years from date of imposition next we have safeguard measures which are remedies of our government to provide affected domestic industries relief against import surges again 
our mandated government agency would be the Tariff Commission, who will conduct formal investigation, monitor uh, the domestic industry's progress in its efforts to make positive adjustment to import competition, uh, investigation on any legitimate request for extension or reapplication of safeguard measures. Our Tariff Commission would look into like products and the level of increased imports which are recent sharp and significant and they will look into the causality of these increased imports of like products and how much injury or threat is being made to our domestic industries who may file that would be your domestic producers even the president, our uh, House and Senate representatives on agriculture and uh, members of the Committee on Trade and Commerce. Also, DTI or the DA secretary. The measures that can be done would be provisional measures, which is not exceed 200 days and if there is enough proof, definitive safeguard measures, which would include increase in or imposition of any duty on the imported product, decrease in or imposition of tariff rate quota on the product, etc. Now, to avoid any issues or imposition of special duties, importers might as well go for this service known as advanced ruling on the classification of goods wherein importers can get official binding time-bound written advice on tariff classification issued by the tariff commission prior to the importation or exportation of a product so under the customs modernization and tariff act uh, an importer or exporter may file a written application for an advanced ruling on the tariff classification of goods with the commission and the commission can render shall render ruling within 30 days from receipt of the uh, application conditions for the ruling advanced ruling would be uh, for one product or item only the application shall be filed within 90 days before the importation so this type of tariff class advanced classification enables uniform identification and application of goods for the purpose of tax and duty collection as well as application of rules of origin international trade negotiations and analysis for economic and business planning who will benefit from this service definitely government importers exporters brokers businessmen and even students with the correct usage of tariff classification, this should facilitate importation, prevent misclassification, misdeclaration, minimize supply chain disruption and shipment delays, allow for collection of valuable statistical data, and promote the payment of correct tariff and taxes. Now, we also have what we call duty and tax-free privileges which is given or extended to returning residents who are Filipino nationals have gone abroad and are now returning uh, overseas Filipino workers who worked in a foreign country under an employment contract as well as former Filipinos. So, Balik Bayans are also entitled so, to this uh, tax duty and tax free privileges. So, the extent of this privilege would be as returning resident and as overseas Filipino workers. You have their limits first 10,000 exemption. Uh, quantity is limited to one of each kind, 
uh, privilege has not been enjoyed previously during the calendar year, etc. Family members of returning residents are also entitled to certain privileges. Conditions and limitations attached to, th to the tax exemption privileges are as follows. Of course, you also have, if you don't fall under the three categories, you can also avail of the duty-free shopping from the duty-free stores. This is um, tax or duty-free merchandise for the convenience of travelers. There is no issue on government uh, losing money because here government earns revenues from these stores. These stores are located in your uh, airports. Also, so you have duty-free privileges for returning Filipinos, overseas Filipino workers, duty-free shops. We also have special economic zones which are selected areas with developed infrastructure which have the potential to be developed into agri-industrial, tourist, recreational, commercial, banking, investment, and financial centers. So duty-free and tax-free flow of goods are allowed in this economic zone. Okay. Of course, these privileges have limits. Uh, frequent traveler avail of the privilege where every time he travels but not exceed $10,000. Okay, you have the following conditions for duty-free shopping. Also, we have special treatments when you bring in motor vehicles which are brand new. The importation of brand new motor vehicles of all types can be liberalized and no longer require prior authority to import. When a motor vehicle is brand new, the following criteria must be satisfied. If not, they will be processed as used motor vehicle. Okay, we have the following uh, individuals who are qualified to import used motor vehicles, returning residents, immigrants, Filipino citizen which holder of a 13G visa, foreign national married to a Filipino, Filipino citizen, a holder of uh, special visas issued to awardees of special government projects with the following conditions. Okay, what else? I think that's it for motor. Let's that's it for motor vehicles. Pets and animals, there are restrictions. So there are quarantine and regulatory agency restrictions on the importation of pets, animals, and household plants. Okay. And you also have prohibited and restricted importations, which is also part of reminders every time you travel. Um, you will see these reminders being posted in uh, airline websites and airports. Balik buying boxes, personal packages, personal effects, or pasalubong sent by our dear Filipinos residing abroad. So, what are allowed as balik buying boxes, non commercial goods, strictly for personal use, value should not exceed $500. Okay. So, balik bayan boxes uh, opened in the Philippine Customs, yes, for examination of the consolidated shipment, which is required by law. 
Okay. I think that's it for uh, tariff and customs uh, rules in the Philippines. Thank you for watching and listening.